hello everyone. After finishing up the Legion of Hall campaign, the heroes of Azeroth, they're rewarded with unique class mounts. And for the paladins, it's Caesar Dawn Rose, who tells us to go meet up with Grayson Shadowbreaker, who wishes to speak with us about a very important matter. Grayson has helped out with equipping paladins in the past, and he even supported Alliance paladins with obtaining the unique epic mounts. These days, you just go pick up the charger as you level up, but back in the day, there was a whole quest line attached to it, with Grayson showing you the way. He had you spend a whole lot of time, materials and gold, but in the end, you ventured forth with the Skolomans and redeemed the spirit of your mount, binding it to carry you in battle. It was somewhat of a tedious task that involved months of obtaining materials and sending paladins all over the world. Thankfully, times have changed and we now have most of these materials at hand. That being said, he wishes to help us obtain a new mount, something worthy of our title as High Lords. In order for us to begin, we require a Stonehide Leather Barding, which is a defensive armor for a horse. Something strong, thick and heavy, obtainable from either a leather worker or the auction house, but the barding needs some improvements to become worthy of the steed who will bear it. Ellard Smith in Daladon, he's the finest smith and knows how to modify the barding, but he will require some materials, namely laystone ore and a Suramarian sapphire, which we pick up at the Evermoon Bazaar for 500 ancient mana. This jewel's cut allows it to trap light within it, giving off a cool blue glow. Now our smith, he goes to work imbuing the bard with laystone and a jewel, some of his finest work if he does say so himself. Next up, our journey takes us into Strathholm, where some much needed materials and our mount itself are waiting. Welcome, High Lord. I've been making preparations for the ritual to cleanse the barding, but so far, we've been unable to secure the holy water. I sent in three of my best men to search for it, but they've not returned. I fear for their safety. Perhaps someone of your skills would be better suited to recover the water. Please, take a pair of my paladins with you. Who knows what's still lurking in this place. We get to pick two paladins to accompany us into the city, either a healing, tanking or DPSing one, and we're here for two reasons. One is to purify the barding by both material and immaterial means. Once upon a time, when Strefholm thrived, before the plague and the purge, it produced holy water capable of cleansing even the darkest of magics. This is the material part that we need, water that has been used for many different quests, even the classic paladin mount quest, and there may still be caches of it lying untouched that we can use. As we go through the city, we also saved the paladins who were sending before us with a run-in with a nasty shadowy figure, a necromancer who also tries to stop us by summoning Pestilon, Osine and Robmouth. None of these unholy beings will stand in a righteous way, and I have to say, I really enjoyed going through Strathholm again. This place has some awesome atmosphere, some of my first videos, they were about soloing this place for the Rivener mounts, and of course the speedruns that they introduced for this place, the 0.5 tier gear I believe, very, very great memories. Now with the water collected and the paladin saved, we return to Grayson to purify the barding. Excellent job recovering the water, High Lord. And you have my deepest thanks for saving my paladins. I'll apply the water to the barding. The rest, High Lord, lies with you and your weapon. It is done. The barding is ready. Now we go to Rivendare's crypt to confront his specter. Mount up, paladins! We ride! They'll bring up the rear, while we're inside dealing with Rivendare. Grayson, he doesn't really feel like using his mount right now as he just walks through the city and he's expected to deal with Rivendare. The original boss of Strathholm was Baron Rivendare, who in life was friends with none other than Kel'Thuzad, who convinced him to join the Cult of the Damned. Rivendare eventually became a Death Knight and was placed in control of the burning remains of Strathholm. He held the city against the Scarlet Crusade and a number of heroes before he was eventually defeated. Undead don't stay dead for very long though, as Rivendare eventually joined Kel'Thuzad and Naxxramas, where he became one of the for horsemen, replacing Alexandros Mograine. His son took over in Strathholm, a son named Arius Rivendare, who actually joined adventurers in taking down his father, but during that battle, he died in the process. Now outside the slaughter square, we find big piles of corpses stacked up high, and inside the slaughterhouse, there seems to be one missing. Where is his body? It should be here. Someone's taken it, and this does not bode well. 
Rimin the Soul Taker, the shadowy figure that tried to stand in our way. He has resurrected an army of undeads and is sitting proudly on top of Shadow Mane. He will spread the plague over this lands once more and all will bow before him. But we do not stand alone in this battle. Our forces, the light is with us in this forsaken place as we take on the Soul Taker and all the rotten corpses that try to drag us down into undeath with them. The beast is bound, High Lord. The light has favored us this day. Let us reconvene at the Sanctum of Light. There, you can bard the beast safely. When you're ready to leave, speak with me, and I'll see to our safe return. We have our purified barding, and we've taken out the necromancer, leaving his undead mount Shadow Mane to be embraced by the light, very reminiscent of the original mount quest, in which it took on the Death Knight Dark Reaver and judged the spirit of his mount to be worthy. We'll be keeping a more watchful eye on Strathholm from now on, and the High Lord of Azeroth claims their golden charger, the fanciest of all the horses. You can also buy different color variations from Crusader Lord Dalfors after unlocking all the artifact traits for different specs. There is the Vengeful Charger for the Ashbringer, the Valorous Charger for the Silver Hand, and the Vigilance Charger for Truth Guards. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how Paladins obtain unique class mounts. Now, I'm hoping to be able to show you all of the class mounts, and while I have been keeping up with the Legion Fall campaign on all 11 characters, the follower questline bit that is taking a bit more time to complete. I haven't kept up with the follower missions on alt at all, I didn't expect it to become a requirement, but hopefully I will be able to complete that soon enough and bring you all the juicy lore videos that I can. For now, we've reached the end of the video, so as always, thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!